This is the introduction to friction. Basically, all I'm going to be talking about in this video is uh, where friction comes from, and maybe a couple typical values of friction, and then maybe finish off with a quick example. That's that's what I'm hoping to get to. So, um, first off, the main two components that will contribute into the amount of friction that's existing in a statics problem are the material's uh, normal force and also what I like to call a material to material coefficient of friction or friction factor. First thing, let's, let's just explore what um, the normal force is and then we'll go into the friction factor. So, First of all, the normal force or the normal reaction is always going to be perpendicular to where the object is resting. So in, in this case, um, up above, we have the normal force pushing straight up because the block is pushing straight down. And this makes sense, but I mean, we could draw something a little bit more extravagant just to make the point. Um, do something like this, and then maybe up. So, I mean, the point of each of these boxes is that you can see where the normal force would act if there is even a value for it. Um, in this case, even though the weight is pushing directly down because of gravity and whatnot, our normal force is going to be pushing out, just straight out of the hill. There's no compromise or, or anything, it's just that that's how um, the hill reacts. So the rest of the force would go into the forward motion, which I'll, prob I'll be talking about um, later on in vector dynamics. But um, since we're talk talking about static problems, I um, just want to get across is that this normal force, this normal force of 1, is always going to be pushing directly out uh, from the ground. In this case at number 2, you can see that the weight is pushing directly down, and thus since the ground is somewhat flat here, you can assume that the normal force will be pushing straight up. Now this does not mean that the object is not moving. Um, I haven't given any indication of that. It could be sliding. All it means is that it's in equilibrium. This means there's no accelerating. So it could be sliding along or it could be stationary. One or the other. And then finally, um, this third box, which looks like you know, its weight is going straight down and the normal force is going almost straight out and one thing that you could almost say about this is hey, it doesn't even look like the normal force will be affected by the weight and that's true and um, if this were the complete um, analysis then uh, the whole acceleration due to gravity would go straight into speeding this block up and accelerating the block down this hill, down this what seems to be just a cliff and the normal force would be essentially zero because there's no um, contact or, or there's no force pushing it into the wall, pushing it you know, sideways, none of this, no force there. So um, That's all I wanted to point out that there is um, a normal force and this is where your friction would come from your your friction force is going to be normal force times your friction factor so obviously in case two right here this is probably going to be our highest point where we will have um, the most amount of friction and then probably then it would be one and then obviously third as the last so So anyway, um, knowing this, we need to be equally as concerned about what materials we use um, when determining our design. So uh, I'm just going to give you some typical, typical static friction values. I have to say static friction values because once these objects start sliding then it's a completely different value and they call that kinetic friction. So anyway, um, typical values of metal on metal. I 
I've seen some f really frictionless, so because it's really highly polished. But then again, I've seen you know steels just rubbed together. So I'm gonna give it, um, and this is all me just guesstimating, but I'm gonna give it between 0.1 and 0.6. I don't see it being once you start getting above 0.6, I start thinking of ceramics and rubbers and things like that. So if you think of maybe a metal on wood. Once again, I, I, you're not going to be able to polish that as closely, so I would just pull up from the bottom, maybe like 0.2, but, um, and then it would probably go to around the same, 0.6. Then, uh, if we go on to maybe like a wood, on wood, um, contact surfaces, it would be probably, I would probably just give it a more... There's less deviation in this, so I would probably just say between 0.3 and 0.5. Woods kind of respond similarly to one another. Uh, there's not there's not much of a wide difference. However, I have seen some types of pine wood that when they're really polished down, or even like oak wood when they're really polished down, that they'll slide on each other and not have a problem. I even have a dresser in my room that's using that same kind of thing, just really polished wood, and it just perfect sliding. So let's go on to something that would be probably a little bit more useful. I mean, if you just think of maybe your tires, um, how about rubber on concrete, right? Um, now this is just from my head, but I'm just going to say that 0.8 to 0.9, and I don't think many people would argue with that, because when you see a car stopping, I mean, it's really grip in the ground even if it is slipping because it has such a high static friction uh, value and this is why we use ru rubber on our tires and not uh, wood or concrete or anything not to mention it's much quieter so anyway um, let me just do a quick example let's see if I can do a quick one um, for this example I'm just going to draw, do a quick drawing, maybe call this 30 degrees right here, and we're going to have a box, which is going to be an easy number, 100 pounds, and just to make my life easier, rather than always having to deal with this angle, I'm going to shift my coordinate system to this, it'll be X and Y. And this way um, our normal force and all those reactionary forces will be in what I like to call just it, it, you're, you're making your math simpler by doing this. So um, go ahead and try it the other way. It's not wrong. It's just this little trick that you that you learn um, as you do more problems. Okay, so um, Maybe for this problem, all I want to know is, if it is in the equilibrium state, what would the friction factor be? And I think that's a fair enough problem, uh, question, so um, let's just look at the sigma of f of y, which needs to equal zero, remember. So what you'll find is that you'll have a hundred cosine of 30 degrees is equal to, well, yeah, is equal to, sorry, that's minus 100 cosine 30 degrees plus uh, the normal force, which is going to be right here. So you have normal, and then you're going to have this component, which is going to go against it, right? And that will equal zero. Well, you find that normal force will equal 100 cosine of 30, which equals 86.6 pounds. Okay. And with this, sigma f of x, we will have 100 sine of 30, 30 degrees is going to equal our friction factor, or, or our force due to friction, I should say. So this component, the component of 
that's going to be pushing this thing down, we're going to have a resistance, which is going to be our, uh, our force due to friction. So, with that known, we have 100, 100 sine 30, which turns out to be 50 pounds equals the force due to friction, which is also 86.6 times our friction factor. And when you solve for that, you get 0.577 as a friction factor. And that's what friction factor you would need to maintain this box in equilibrium at a 30 degree angle. Kind of interesting and uh, pretty quick and easy. So uh, I hope you guys uh, enjoy this whole series. There's a couple more problems I have, so let's get on.